Let's talk about fabric straps today and how to make them super strong and sturdy for your next bag. Hola, this is Ali. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I share with you sewing and embroidery techniques, tutorials, and pattern reviews so that you and I can make beautiful things together. In today's video, we're going to focus on fabric straps. I am going to show you the three most common yet effective methods to make your fabric straps so they are beautiful, strong, and durable. Plus, I'm going to share with you the type of fabrics that are the best for making straps. Once you learn these techniques, the sky is the limit for you. You will find the one method that you like the most and you can apply that method over and over again, of course, depending on the fabric that you're using, but you will have that knowledge that will help you change the design or improve the design of your bag. Now, make sure you save this video for future references. Please leave a comment letting me know which method is your favorite, if you've learned anything, or if you have any questions. Now, if you feel like you have learned something in today's video, would you consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you haven't done so yet, so that you can see other videos like this one. And tag me on social media if you have done any of these methods and you wanna share your results with me. I would love to see what you've done. Okay, you guys, now let's work on the first method. Let's make it using the folding method. Your cotton fabric. You can use also some home decor fabric. You can also use some sort of broadcloth or something that is a light cotton material. You can also use, uh, this is, you know, light denim, very light denim fabric. This will also work for this folding method. You can also use a waterproof canvas or even water resistant canvas, which is a little bit thinner than the waterproof canvas. For this type of strap or any of the straps, do not use any soft fabric or see-through fabric or even some sort of knit fabric like this that actually um, kind of have a lot of stretch. You want something that is in between, that has some move to it, but it's not stiff either. You will also need some sort of iron mat and an iron to press your straps in for every method, you will need this. You will need a quilting ruler. You will need a rotary cutter. You will need masking tape. Now masking tape is optional, but once I show you how I use it, you may decide that it's not so optional after all. And of course you need your foot to be the, to have the one eighth marking. So if you have the stitch in the ditch foot for your machine, you can use that one. For the folding method, I am going to use the quilting cotton. And for this method, your strip of fabric needs to be really wide, about four inches wide. And it can be as long as you want it to be. It could be 62, 63 inches for a crossbody bag or smaller, depending on what your pattern says. This fabric is 44 inches wide, so I have to cut more than one strip of fabric. I'm also going to cut the salvage off because I don't want that to show on my final strap. So make sure you gather all the strips of fabrics that you need to put together to make the strap the length that you want. Next, we're going to add interfacing. It is recommended that you add interfacing to your strap. If you're using quilting cotton, 
home decor, outdoor fabric, any fabric like that. Now, if you're using waterproof canvas, you do not need to interface it because of the PVC coating. That gives the fabric the stability that it needs and the protection that it needs. So no need to use interfacing for that. So go ahead and cut your interfacing four inches wide and the same length and apply the interfacing to your fabric. After you stitch it at a half an inch seam allowance, you want to open that seam and you're going to press it. You're going to take it back to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch it at one eighth of an inch seam allowance all along the edges here so that the seam stays flat and it doesn't open up during the process of putting the strap together. Okay, now you're going to take your strip of fabric right wrong side facing you right sides down and you're going to mark a center crease now before we do that depending on what you're going to do with your strap if you're going to have your the end of your strap exposed that means that it can be seen from the outside of your bag you want to fold the edge here for at least like a half an inch down and just press it really good so that way you can hide that raw edge once you do that you're going to fold it in half like this so you can see the outside of your fabric and you're going to match the long edge of your strip of fabric and you're going to take your iron and you're going to press it okay creating a crease down in the center. After you've done this step, you're going to open up your strip of fabric and you'll have your crease down the center. Now you're going to take one side of the long edges and you're going to fold it so it matches that crease. And you're going to do this all along your strip of fabric on one side and you're going to do it again on this side. So both edges will meet down in the center where that crease is. Beautiful. Now you're going to fold it one more time and make sure that if you have any raw edges here that you push them in. Now fold it and as you fold it and you press it, you can also put a pin so it stays in place and move on. Now you can take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch all around four, the four, all four sides of the strap. So you're going to start at the edge, 
circle all along the strap turn right here on the other edge and keep going at one eighth of an inch seam allowance three millimeter stitch length so here's your finished strap now this type of strap is perfect if you don't have a lot of materials like inserts and things or if you're just kind of learning how to make straps because really all you need is the same fabric that you have been using to make the bag and interfacing and that's it as you can see it's very very easy to make and it feels really strong and sturdy and because of the interfacing and the double fold so it feels really thick and it's because you have pretty you have pretty much four layers of fabric plus the interfacing it will really help your strap withstand the wear and tear that it will be exposed to before we jump to the next method have you learned anything so far let me know down in the comments and type the word strap that way i know that you have learned something today and if you don't mind consider hitting the like button thank you so much now let's make this strap using the folding method with an insert so for this method you will be using some wrapping or fabric webbing is typically made uh, by a basket weave construction so it easily frays as this as you can tell it, but it's it's really strong because it's either made out of nylon or acrylic polyester so these are very strong materials so it is recommended every time you're using webbing whether you're using the webbing by itself or it's being covered with fabric you have to burn the edges of the webbing after you cut it with your scissors right you are going to burn it so you're going to get a lighter now you have to be very careful you don't want to burn it so much that it melts and it burns and it, it looks damaged keeping the distance a little bit it will melt and it will get really stiff and that will prevent it from uh, fraying in the future right so just be careful don't spend too much time on it like that just real quick until you feel it kind of sticky and that you know that it's melted and it's not going to fray oh, the yeah. most common size is the one inch and that is the size that i have for this webbing when i use this method the width of my fabric is three and a half inches and then the length is whatever length you want it to be and i'm just going to use a little piece here for the demonstration i'm not going to make a full strap out of this if you're starting to sew and you're starting to learn what i would do is i would take my ruler and draw a line along the one lone edge of your strap and you're going to draw one inch down the strap now if it's a long strap this is going to take you a little bit of time but look at it as training wheels right when you when you're learning something you use these tools to make it easy on you and then once you get practice you you can do it without marking anything you're going to place your webbing on the wrong side of the fabric where your interfacing is and you're going to just pick one long edge of your webbing and you're going to match it along the long edge of your strap just put as many pins as you need making sure your edge matches that your webbing is not over the fabric or under the fabric okay you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch it at one eighth of an inch seam allowance all along the edge now that you have your webbing secure to your fabric you are going to mark three eighths of an inch on the other side of your strip of fabric okay you're 
you are going to fold your webbing with your fabric towards the center of your strip of fabric. One thing that is super important is that you make sure that it's tight, that you don't have any like leftover fabric here. And you're going to pull your fabric and you're going to you know, place some pins here. Okay, like that. So let's go ahead and press it. Pressing always helps because you can work with the fabric better because it keeps the shape. Now, with waterproof canvas, when you press the fabric, you need to make sure that you don't press it where the PVC coating is, the plastic, because that's a plastic and it will melt and it will get on your iron and you don't want that, right? So make sure that if you do this method with the waterproof canvas that you turn the fabric like this and then you fold it and then press it on this end. That way that PVC coating doesn't melt on your iron. Okay, so here we are, it's folded. Now I'm going to fold it to go over this other side of my webbing and my fabric making sure again that my raw edges match along the side and that's where my opening is going to be right and you may have to you know work the fabric a little bit now be careful if you notice that your webbing is not laying down flat then that means that you're pulling the fabric too much and maybe your seam here, your folding is too big. Maybe you can just make it a little bit smaller so that you can have more fabric to work with on your fold. Don't pull it in where it goes, the folded edge gets in the center because when you stitch it, then you're going to have a stitch line right in the center or kind of off the side. You want it to be as close to the edge as possible. Now you can take this to your sewing machine. Make sure that you stitch it with the folded side facing you. Okay. This way. That way you can see where the stitching is and make sure that you're catching all the folds. Now let's make the fabric tube method. This method, you create a tube with your piece of fabric where you're going to insert your webbing. The fabric that you can use for this type of strap is your quilting cotton, polyester, twill, uh, broadcloth, your fabric that is not super heavy, and maybe a lightweight home decor fabric, you could probably use it for this. Uh, also that light, light denim. I do not recommend that you use this method with waterproof canvas, outdoor fabric that is heavy, duck canvas, anything like that. This is not recommended. This is truly a method for your lighter weight fabric, right? You're going to interface your fabric the same way. You're going to cut it the length that you want. However, the width of it, it's a little bit smaller. You still have your webbing, which is one inch wide. The measurements for 
your the width of your fabric will be the width of your webbing times two so this is one inch times two so it's two inches then you have to have a half a half an inch seam allowance that's for a quarter inch on each side and then you want to have some wiggle room because of the thickness of the webbing and to be able to insert the webbing through the fabric tube you want to add another quarter inch to that so the total width of your strap of your strip of fabric is two and three quarter inches you are going to need two additional tools to make this strap you are going to need a turning tool and i have this there are several types of turning tools i've had this for a long long time it has like a little hook it has like a like a latch here it almost looks like a crochet latch but it's, it's more like you know, a latch to pull yarn through. You can use this, and I've, I've used this for a, a long time. Or you can use a piece of yarn and make sure that your yarn is longer than your piece of fabric that you are using for your strap. So in this case, my strap, I cut it 44 inches, just the width of my fabric. This is about 50 inches long. And I'm gonna show you how, I, my little tip on how I use the yarn to turn my fabric. Another tool you're going to use to slide the webbing through the tube is this little clip and glide bobkin and it has you can open it like that and it releases it's kind of like a clip and then you put the webbing right there and then you close it and it, it holds the webbing really really tight and so it's easy to slide and it's not going to come off during the middle of the process of pushing this webbing through the tube. If you don't have this tool, you can also use a safety pin. I have used that as well. And for the safety pin option, I suggest do not insert the safety pin too close to the edge because as you're pulling the webbing through the tube, it could break the webbing and come off. So I insert my safety pin at about um, five eighths of an inch from the edge and then i close it like that and that way as i'm pulling my webbing i know that it's not going to rip it and come off the masking tape is going to come handy also during this process and the reason for that is that when you are pushing your webbing through the tube, you don't want this to get twisted. And you want to make sure that you know which side is the top and the bottom per se. So that way when you are getting your strap done, you are not uh, twisting the, the strap and then end up with you know an issue so what i do is i pick either side doesn't matter which one and i put a piece of tape and i put a piece of tape say this is the back say this is going to be the back of my of my strap so i just take a little piece of tape like this and i go along my uh, my webbing and now I know that this is the back of my webbing. If you're going to use the method to turn the fabric inside out using the yarn, you need to do this before you do anything else, which is stitch the yarn to your piece of fabric. So you pick whichever side you want, you need to, stitch it the right side of your fabric right here 
and make sure you have some yarn sticking out don't you know don't get it too close to your seam allowance remember you're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance so kind of like right there around between the center and and the edge and just go ahead and stitch it several times right there once it's stitched there now fold your fabric like this making sure the piece of yarn is in the center of the fabric here you're going to fold it and you're going to go all along the long edge of your fabric okay and your piece of yarn is right there This is very important to open the seam using a hot iron to help you turn the tube inside out easily. Now that it's pressed, you can just start pulling the yarn and you start pulling and pulling and pulling. And then when it gets to this point, you are going to fold the edge of the tube in towards the inside of the tube like that and that is going to help the fabric move down the tube so there it is it's all inside and then you start pulling your yarn and as you pull the yarn the fabric starts going down this process takes a while and that is why it's not recommended for a fabric that is heavy or very stiff because the fabric doesn't give in easily We start by pressing the seam open, same as before. We're gonna use this turning tool. It has a little hook there, like a crochet hook, and it has a latch used to pull thread. What you're going to do, you're going to insert this tool inside the fabric tube. And this end right here, you can use it to hold the tool in place by squish all the fabric through the tube and when it gets to the end here you're going to hook the fabric and you see that latch that means that the fabric is now secure so you're going to twist and turn and you're going to help the fabric with your hand by pushing the fabric inside the tube. But because it is secured with the tool, it's not going to come off. And now you can start pulling carefully and slowly. Now you feel the, it's right there. The hook is right there. I can feel it and I can use the other end of this tool. To push the fabric through. So it's crunch your fabric and pull It's crunch and pull. That's what you're going to be doing until the fabric comes through the other side. And as you can see, 
it's right there it was hooked don't worry it is not going to damage your fabric Now you're going to pick the side of your webbing that you want it to be the wrong side and you're going to place tape, masking tape, washi tape, whatever you're using and that is going to help you mark the back side of your webbing. Make sure your ends are sealed like I explained before. This webbing is shorter than your strap approximately half an inch shorter than your actual strap. Now we're going to use this slide and glide batkin. And this little tool is really useful. You actually are going to connect it to your webbing and you see it's very strong. Now on the other side, you're going to stick the pointy end inside your turned fabric tube. Make sure you move the webbing around to help it get inside the tube. And you're going to scrunch the fabric and pull. And you're going to do this all throughout your fabric tube, piece by piece, and making sure your strap is not twisted. I mean, the webbing sure is not twisted. twisted. That's why you use the tape to mark it. This is important because if it goes inside the tube twisted, then you're going to have to take it all out and insert it again. Now I feel the pointy end there and that's the guide to tell you. Holding here, I pull the fabric on the other side of the strap. I can remove the tape now because I know it's not twisted. And I keep doing the same here. Take your time with this process and push your fabric through the webbing. You can remove the tape once it gets closer. That way you know it is not twisted. And you see how this fabric gets squished and scrunched a lot. That's why it is recommended that you use a quilt and cotton or a softer fabric for this process because a, a stiffer fabric will be really difficult to get through here. And we're almost at the end. I pull it a little bit out so that I can remove the bodkin, open it and set it aside. But I will have a little bit of fabric left over here because my webbing is a little bit smaller than my strap of fabric. And just make sure that it is smooth and flat and flat and that your seam is on this in the center of your strap and it's not twisted if anything is wrong with your strap this is the time to fix it if you have to remove the webbing and insert it again this is the time to do that now you have your raw edges because we are making this strap where it's going to be removable or it's maybe it's a body, a crossbody strap and the raw edges are going to be visible. You want to fold the edges in towards the inside of the fabric tube. And once you do that, it was going to cover the raw edges and then you can finish it up when you stitch it.
this is perfect now you're going to take this to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch it at one eighth of an inch seam allowance, three millimeter stitch length on all four sides. So the short end, the long end, the other short end, and turn around and the other long end. And now I'm gonna show you how to make a strap using a combination of fabric and faux leather. You can check that out here. 